everybody. It's Dr. Kelly. Get ready, buckle in, because in this episode of your next Learn It Moment, I'm going to reveal a 2,000-year-old technique that will actually get your students, get your audience to lean in and say, please give me more of what you got. You watch this section of the next Learn It Moment. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Kelly. I used to be a teacher in the toughest classrooms in the worst neighborhoods with the most difficult students. And what I learned there changed everything I thought I knew about content creation and delivery. Over the past 25 years, I've taught thousands of students, both in person and online. And what I can tell you is that effective online engagement is the hardest thing you'll ever do without guidance. So I've dedicated this channel to showing people exactly how to capture attention, hold engagement, and create transformation. Every single part of it. I love learning, I love teaching and making an impact, and that's all you're gonna find right here. All right, everybody, so what am I talking about? Well, let me tell you. If you strategically place questions throughout your information, specifically at the beginning of any teaching of new information, and this is like one of my favorite things to do, if you do this strategically, you can actually have your audience leaning in, requiring, like begging for more of what you have. So what we're going to do today, and this is going to be fun. You're going to like this. I'm going to like this. We're all going to like this. I'm going to, I'm actually creating a new course right now on confidence and self-esteem. And what we're going to go through is I'm going to show you how I'm going to set this up so that I actually create and only talk to the people that I wanna to talk to, that I create a course that actually evokes and makes massive impact for the people who take this course, okay? So I'm the question, the, the topic today is definitely, do you use quality questions, quality questions that actually get response? If not, get out a pen, get out a paper, start taking some notes because you're gonna love what I'm gonna give you on this one. Okay, so here we go, here it is course is going to be called Confidence and Self-Esteem. And I'm going to start this out by probably not even doing the reveal on this yet. I'm going to start this out just by saying, and let's say, let's say hypothetically that you and I are engaged in a conversation. Let's say, let's say we're having a coffee. Let's say we're like knee to knee and we're talking and I lean in and, you know, it's one of those moments that, you know, it's just like there's stuff going around, but it's really just me and you just me and you in the room. And it's one of those moments that, you know, I feel connected and you feel connected. And, and I can say to you, hey, have you ever felt in your life, like at any time, or maybe even today, that you're at, like, you have like confidence or some self-esteem issues that, you know, maybe aren't being addressed. And then I'm going to just sit and I'm going to wait. And in the research that I've been doing, most people in some area of their life are going to have confidence or self-esteem issue. Um, I love that quote saying, you know, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Well, you would do things that are stupid, ridiculous. You would be, you would be the person, the hero that you always wanted to be because the only thing holding you back is confidence that you can do it. So all of us, I believe, uh, my current hypothesis, is that we all suffer in some version from some confidence or self-esteem issues. So I'm going to start our conversation that way. And as we start to progress, I'm going to say, okay, you know, like, let's talk about it. Let's, 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 let's bring it out into the open because that's the only way that anything actually gets fixed. So let's talk about this. You know, like what areas in your life would you say you have, you know, any of these issues? Would you say, you know, uh, maybe it's some public speaking or maybe it's talking to girls. Uh, maybe it's making sales calls or really, really common right now is maybe it's body esteem issues like self-esteem and regards around your body is maybe it's those kind of issues. Now, there's many different ways, many different things that you can talk about self-confidence about, but really they all kind of have the same underpinnings and there's just different tips, tricks, and strategies we can use to start to change those. But let's say for our purposes of this conversation, of this moment, that our 
focus is going to be around public speaking. And let's let's make this next section a little bit less uh, serious than, you know, maybe some of the other confidence or self-esteem issues that we could get into, just because it's going to make our, our session go a little more of a flow to it, okay? So now that we've kind of underpinned that we're going to be talking about self-esteem directly as it relates to public speaking, now we can have a little bit of fun with it, right? We can say, well, you know, I always thought you were a glossophobe. You know, maybe, you know, you can start to pull it out, which is obviously somebody that's scared of public speaking. And then you can say, well, you know, the thing of it is, though, here's the thing. Here's the thing. For all you glossophobics out there, here's the thing that you need to know. A, it's like the number one fear in the world. It's, in fact, more feared than death for some people. So, holy mackerel, like the, the projections right now are 75% of the entire world has a fear of public speaking. So, it, don't beat yourself up. It's not like you're a loner sitting out on a curb by yourself. This is a vast majority of people are scared of talking or speaking in public. So, if it's you, don't worry about it. Now, why would you do that? Why would you want to start with some questions that really got people to thinking, uh, you know, kind of like that, this is serious, self-esteem, post, this is serious, and then kind of made some fun of it. Because if you can do that, when you make it serious and then you can make it fun, you can open up the brain to a whole different world of learning. And it, A, makes learning fun, which is absolutely crucial, but it also makes us more relatable to each other because we all deal with this at some level. So, you know what? Learning doesn't have to be in isolation. We can all learn together. I mean, isn't that what we should be doing anyways? I believe so. Okay, so now that we've started to make it open, we've we've pulled the, and, you know, the proverbial elephant in the room and we've started talking about them, we can start to make it a little bit more specific. Well, and this is where I want a little bit of intrigue. I want you to lean forward now because I've planted a seed, I've had some fun, and now I want some intrigue. I was like, what if, and I'm just, I'm just spitballing, but what if I could guarantee that you could fix your phobia in the next 14 days using a technique that's been around for over 2,000 years and has never, ever failed. I guarantee it. And then I wait. I wait for some response. In this situation, obviously, I feel like some of you, if you're scared of public speaking, would respond. You'd be like, me, please. I'd like some of that. I would like to know in 14 days that I could tackle that fear. Because what are the use cases? Well, Jesus, imagine the use cases. Let's say in 14 days you have your daughter's wedding coming up and you need to do a toast to the bride or you need to do a toast to the groom or you need to, uh, you know, do a presentation in front of your board members or, you know, you've got a sales presentation or you need to talk to your boss about something really important and he wants you to put together a presentation to show him the the the, the walkthrough to throw him, show him the progressions and you're like good 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 and your armpits are sweating and your palms are wet there's a million use cases for being able to confidently walk into a room and public speak maybe it's a seminar maybe it's a lecture i don't know but we all have them we all come up with them unless you've decided to be a hermit which you shouldn't be and you're probably not watching this if you are a hermit but you know what? Imagine the use cases of having that skill that I can help you with in the next 14 days. So what we've done now is we've asked some questions that started to actually create relevance. Then we want to make some more intrigue. Then we want to say, imagine how you could use this information. What does that do? That really pinpoints the relevance of your skills or your information to your students. Then, then we can say, now, now we get back more serious, okay? I want you to think for a second. I want you to think for a second of all the things that you haven't done, that you didn't do, that you won't do if we don't take care of this together. Seriously. Like, 
everybody likes to play, you know, in like keep it lighthearted. But the fact of the matter is this issue, this fear, this phobia, it's keeping you from starting that new business. It's keeping you from running for office, if you're so inclined to do that. It's keeping you from asking for that promotion. It's keeping you playing small. And that's not what we as humans are designed to do. I want you to play big. I want you to explode. I want you to be on fire looking for places to public speak, right? So what we can do now is say, okay, well, imagine all the things that you're not doing because of this fear. And then we want to paint that glimmer of hope down the way saying, hey, all you need to do is these 14 days. And on the other side of 14 days is the you that you always imagined to be. And now this is what's really important. Now, this isn't questioning. This is a different little side you know, road I'm going to go down for a sec. But what I want to do is you, you can t attach a story for relevance to here. And the question actually ends up being, do you mind if I tell you a quick story about this? Well, you know what? Uh, I've done this for a long time. Nobody ever says, no, 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 Dr. Kelly, no, uh, Mr. Polson, when I was a teacher. No, 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 don't tell me any stories. Just get to the information. Nobody says that. Everybody wants a story. Everybody likes stories. So that's when you can start up with the story. So you're like, you know, I got to tell you, where, where did this come from? Where did this 2,000-year-old technique came from? Well, Back when I was a teacher, I worked with some of the toughest kids in the toughest neighborhoods. And I was actually tasked to work with one child who was actually being slotted to move right out of uh, the public system and put in a, uh, an institution. Uh, no, not paint it lightly. That's exactly what the plan was. And my job was to try to teach this uh, seven, grade seven, uh, your, uh, grade seven uh, physics. And it was obviously just light math physics, but uh, we were in a math unit. And what it occurred to me is that his hero, his hero was Wayne Gretzky. Well, what could I do that would help me help him learn math when his hero is Wayne Gretzky and the kid loves hockey? Well, A, I started using players' hockey numbers, right? Like Wayne Gretzky was 99. So we can start to interact with all the numbers in hockey. And then, you know, what's great is statistics. Well, nobody has more statistics than Wayne Gretzky. The guy's got a zillion records. So using Wayne Gretzky's uh, statistics in all the things he did, in all the passes, all the goals, all the trophies, everything allowed me another opening. And then when we got into the more technical stuff in math, like the physics side of it, Oh my gosh, we got angles, we got trigonometry, we got, you know, vectors, we've got speed, we've got the rate of one player skating and then puck catching that player. And by actually drawing this stuff out, saying, you know, hey, listen, you know, we got a guy over here, he's going to pass the board, pass the buck against the boards to a player skating this way. All of a sudden now, this kid who was a massive uh, learning disabilities was intrigued was leaning in going, yeah, yeah, then what? How does he do that? And all of a sudden it was like these light bulbs were going off. When you start to make sure that you're asking questions like, how does Wayne Gretzky know how fast he should pass the puck in order to get it to a player skating 20 kilometers an hour, or, you know, 30 kilometers an hour up the ice? we're starting to make your information relevant to your student. And this is absolutely crucial. So I don't care what your information is. I truly don't. I promise you, if you look, if you start to analyze it, if you do the work, you will find ways to make your information relevant to your students. And then the explosions, the fireworks go off and you don't have students, you have followers. And as a teacher, that's the coolest thing ever. So I want to tell you, if you want to do the work, you do it in advance. Prepare your questions in advance. And nobody does this. That is a pro tip. Write that down. Prepare questions in advance. Don't just rely on the fact that you're going to immediately at, you know, will come up with these ad hoc questions that are going to make and penetrate your audience. You must have your questions prepared in advance. 
And once you do, then now um, it's like I always use these farming analogies. And it's not because I'm a farmer, but I do know a lot of farmers. It's because it makes sense. When you have prepared the brain to accept information, just like a farmer prepares his field, you can get crops to grow and you can get ideas to grow and take root. And that's when now that you've prepared this and the step would be relevance, intrigue, what, do you, uh, what can you do with this? What are you missing out? A little story to cement it all together. Now the brain is wide open. And I'm, this is killer stuff if you start to implement it. The brain's wide open to start to grow and foster new stuff. And that's when you can start to present all of your core information. And what I want you to do, here's your assignment. Here's your assignment. And do not shortchange yourself. Go do this. Take everything that I just gave you and figure out how you can use this today. How can you take this information today and use it? And if you want more information, by golly, I'm sure in the link somewhere, there's a link you can click or a doohickey you can beep up boop boop to get a hold of us because we'll help you take your to make your content 10 times more impactful and more engaging. I'm Dr. Kelly, guys. Go out there, make a difference.